Okay, in this video, I thought I'd share a little bit about my workflow and how I create work in progress renders or just untextured renders of my models to post online. You don't need a camera or lights or materials to do this. You just need to adjust a few viewport settings. So let's get into it. Here I have a lightsaber model that I created in Moto about 10 years ago. It's really hard to believe that it's actually been 10 years, but uh, I decided to bring it into Blender for this video. Now I could just render this as is or screenshot it, but that's a little boring. So the first thing I do is create this bowl shaped object to use as a background. Then I apply a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out. And that allows me to navigate around the model and I can get renders from any angle. Next, I come up here and click on this little down arrow to open the viewport shading menu. And the first thing I do is make sure outline is enabled. Um, if, I, if I turn it off, you can see how the model just kind of goes flat and sort of blends in with the background. If I enable it, then you get this nice outline all the, all the way around it. You can also change the color of the outline. If you change to RGB and drag this up into the white, then you can have a blue outline, a red, or green, or whatever. But I like to keep it at black, so I'm going to go back to HSV and set everything back to zero. I leave specular lighting enabled and depth of field. I've never used it. Um, you'd have to set up a camera for that, but I like to keep it simple for these viewport renders. Next, I enable cavity. And when I turn it on, You'll see I get these highlights on all the edges of the model. And with Cavity, you get a few different options. You can set it to Screen or World or both. Set to Screen by default, and if you switch it to World, you see all the highlights go away. And it actually is almost the same as not having Cavity on at all. So what I like to do set it to both and this will give me a nice amount of contrast and you also have these ridge and valley settings that you can adjust to get different looks and I think for this one I'm gonna make a few adjustments here to get a little more highlights a little more darkness in the crevices maybe something like that next I enable shadow, which helps to ground the model. You can adjust the shadow intensity or the shadow darkness here. You set it to one, you get really dark shadows. You set it to 0.2, you get a really light shadow. I'm gonna leave it at 0.5 for this video. And you can change the direction of the shadow by hovering over this little gear icon. And then click and drag on the sphere and watching the viewport as the shadow moves around. And I think I'm gonna set it around there for this video. There's also an X-ray option if you want something like that. Uh, back face culling. Um, it hides the back, back side of the faces, but I never use that. The last thing I do is switch from Studio to MatCap. And if you click on the preview image, you can see all the MatCaps that you have available. Now, I have a bunch of custom MatCaps that I've downloaded, so your list will be much smaller than mine. But there's a lot of free matte caps you can download if you search online for free Blender matte caps. You can also make your own matte caps, but that's a different topic for a different video. 
To apply a mat cap, just click on it and it will display on your model in the viewport. For my renders, I like to use this basic mat cap. And if you want to add a little color to it, you can click on single and then click on the color bar and you can add a little bluish tint or purple or whatever you want. I'm going to keep it at gray, so I'm going to set these back to zero. You can also switch to random and that will apply a different color to each item in your item list, which is kind of interesting. So once you have all your viewport settings adjusted, you can go to view and render or viewport render image. But if I zoom in real close, you can see pretty jagged and low resolution. So if I come over here to output settings and I change the X and Y resolution, I'm going to double it to 5120 by 2880 and then come back to view, viewport render, and now I get a much cleaner image. To save your image, come up here to image, save as, and I always save to TIFF format, and then I take the images into Photoshop for editing. So just hit Save as Image. And then you can close this window. And then just navigate around, take renders from different, different views, and adjust your shadow and just get all the renders you want. Okay, so now I'm in Photoshop and I'll go to Image, Image Size, and I wanna make sure Resample Image is disabled. Then I'm gonna change the height to 10 and that will change the width and resolution to match because everything is linked together. So I'll click OK and that will resize the image. And from here, I'll crop the image and add some text and adjustment layers to polish it up. So here's a file that I already prepared. I added a border around the edges. I added some text and a photo filter with a deep blue filter applied with 16% density. Um, brightness contrast layer, curves layer, and lastly, I added this gradient layer with opacity set to 40% to darken up the top edge of the image. So once I'm finished with all my editing, I'll go to File, Save As, and save it as JPEG format. And now if I open up the file, I have a nice high quality image to post online. Okay, that's it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.